Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and I am actually having a guest with me today, an old friend of the show, and a really cool view to make time for this. I appreciate it. Everyone say hello to Eddie's Mullet. Eddie's Mullet, say hi to the Parasites. Hey, thanks for having me back. Yeah, hell yeah, man. And uh, we talked about this a while ago about wanting to discuss the Al Ewing series because I was ready to just kind of give up on current Venom, <laughs> like as you guys know, like, and as Eddie knows, like I was just like, I don't care anymore that uh, Donnie Cates' run just put a really bad taste in my mouth. And I just felt like the direction they're going with the character was just too extreme for me. And, uh, and I stayed away from it, but Eddie, you kept up with Venom and so did other people like Cam and a couple other people that watched the show. So I want to kind of get your impression just in general, we're going to talk about the first five issues of Al Ewing and Rom V's and Brian Hitch's Venom series today. But just real quick before we get into the details, what is your overall impression of the first five issues? First five, I went into, I I kind of felt at the end of Kate's run, it, it can't get any worse, right? So I was pretty much on board for whatever. And I went into it knowing that Ewing and uh, Rom were kind of mm -hmm. hamstrung with the with the situation that Kate's left Eddie as an omnipotent being. So I was like, well, I was gonna, I gave, I didn't care. I was like, I'll I'll let it roll. I'll let it build. So I I I was optimistic of the run going into it. Okay. Um. Yeah. That. So in me, I was. I like Al Ewing. I've I've liked his um different runs that he's done i haven't loved everything he's done but for the most part i like his stuff and uh, and rom v is like an up-and-coming person in writing and uh i've liked you know his justice league dark stuff over at dc like his backup story so i was kind of i was hopeful of the team i'm not a big fan of brian hitch uh his art i don't hate his art by any means um but i feel like it's it is and it can be inconsistent and then it's also like I, he just does not know how to know how to draw young people like anyone who's like 13 or 14 looks 25 uh he just he, he puts too much muscle structure in them makes them too tall and then i think he realizes it and he goes back and tries to add things around them to make those objects bigger to make the characters look smaller uh and <laughs> that never works for me either so I wasn't optimistic going into this, and as you know, it, it's been. I think issue thirteen is coming out next week as of recording this episode, and I'm just now reading the first ten, so we can do this episode. So uh, I appreciate everyone out there who pushed me to check this out because uh, um, I want to get into my thoughts too. But I want to start with Eddie. Like, so with going in with optimism on this run, and yeah, I agree with you. Like most writers, like they pull like a Nick Spencer for the most part, where at the end of their runs, they try to put all the toys back in the sandbox the way they were so that the next writer doesn't have like a a bunch of dramatic things to have to work around to progress the story um, or they get the chance to restart over. And Kate's and them, I guess, agreed maybe with the editor too that we're not going to put the toys back in the sandbox as they were. We're going to just leave them and it's, it's going to be a challenge for the next writer. So you going in optimistic, how did this first, you know, run kind of hit you with that optimism did it bring it down or are you happy you read it through this first part of this whole run i'm still like <laughs> by the by the end of it like i was like something's coming something's gotta be coming so i'll i'll wait uh so it's, i guess it's not really a spoiler but my feelings as it went on is like all right enough already but through this first run i was like okay something's he's doing something so that's i i still only thing that really bugged me in this is like what you was Hitch. I cannot stand the way Hitch draws Venom's mouth. It it looks unhinged. I, like like yeah, like it's just hanging. That that's yeah, that's my that's my biggest complaint. I don't care how old he makes these people look or it, but if he can't draw the main character's main feature properly, it it just drives me crazy. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, and I, I would say I noticed that too. Like, yeah, the jaw looks like it's not attached, so it's like it's like a, a, it's like it's two D. Is it, it, I mean, I know that's obviously a two dimensional picture, but I don't know. It's it, the per, the perspective on it is is off. He he tends to do that. I noticed some of his posing for Venom in this run is is very unique. <laughs> to say oh, there's another. The, there is another nitpick. He, he does like these little nubby pokey arms uh, too. Um, yeah. That it. <laughs> that yeah. I didn't like those either. 
<laughs> yeah, so so let's we'll start diving into story now. And I, I will say um, just up front because I want to kind of shock people <laughs> at, with this at the beginning, and then we'll go into the details. But um, I like this run. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I can't believe, I cannot believe I'm saying that. And maybe it's because I had so many people tell me they didn't like it that I was really set my expectations low. But as I'm reading this, this story, there, there's two halves of the story, and we're going to get into that. There's the Eddie uh, moving through time version, which that's definitely the stuff I'm not a huge fan of. Yeah. And then there's then there's the rest of the book, though, is very street level like way more street level than i thought and mm -hmm. it brought back, it brought back a lot of supporting characters from runs prior that kate's kind of pushed to the side so yeah i was really blown away by that and and i i was glad that none of that was actually spoiled for me because it made me go huh this ain't so bad like some of this ain't so bad um, no, I, on those two, the two stories. Yeah, I'm the I'm the same way. The the garden of time or Murdis's garden. I mean, I I really don't care I, when I get to it. Yeah, it's I surprisingly I'm more into well, I'm not, not surprised. It's it seems it's classic. You know, he's he's fighting bad guys, and he they did like I like that he established like Archer and the the bringing back the Life Foundation. That's mm -hmm. I, I liked all that stuff. I was all, I was happy about it. And then, you know, sleep, having sleeper back is great too. Um, uh, it's weird that sleeper doesn't have a host <laughs> still, but at, at this point in the story, which, but yeah, I like there's actual, there's a cast around them and bringing back non, like bring in non symbiote characters as well, which has always been something I've, he needs to get away from the, the character itself right yeah there's there's certainly a lot of um like with everything with meridius and and the garden and stuff like that's all still symbiote related obviously mm -hmm. but um but you're right everything that dylan is going through he's not up against symbiotes he's up against the life foundation and like you said archer who is this new character they created that had a connection to eddie back in his journalism days um, and then bringing back uh, Liz Allen and Alchemex, and then tying in Roxxon, uh, which is something Al Ewan worked on in his Hulk run. So, um, and saying that all these companies are are going out of business, and then bringing in Senator Crane's son from the uh, Extreme Carnage story, and saying like, who well, who funded him? How did he get to be the senator after his dad died? And then you find out Roxxon is being saved, uh, Alchemex is being saved financially, and the senator all because the life foundation has been brought back and uh, and all and they're kind of connected to everybody and they're bringing back the jury and and carlton drake has been uh, restored by meridius to his human form from his spider form which is great that they even reference that <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's just all these things that i'm like wow they're they're trying here like they're they're trying to take this big thing that donny cates left them with and make it work in this street level conspiracy theory story that they're trying to build which i I got to give him credit. It's actually some of some of the stories really working for me. No, yeah, that's like especially this beginning of this. I was really happy to see all like the '90s. That's the stuff I was like dying for Donnie to do, like because he touched on the look, brought Eddie's dad back and that. But right. for the most part, I, there wasn't a lot of the stuff from the books that he said he loved so much. But uh, yeah, you it, the. The other thing that kind of bugs me about this run, though, is bouncing back between Ewing and Rom is I, you might know more cause with being in, into comics before behind the scenes. But like you kind of trying to see is is Rom trying to write Ewing's story? It, that's what it seems like to me. It, uh, they're trying to fill in blanks. Yeah, like I would say I would say like the, the garden stuff like that. That almost comes across Hickman like to me. Um and but but at the same time, Al Ewing did some really bold concepts, if you want to you say that, with the Hulk run he did, which I actually kind of like that run. Um, and then he did like the what was it, the Ultimates before that with Blue Marvel and those characters. Yeah. And uh, and I'm like, okay, so this he has big ideas and concepts. Like he's like a, a one of those guys, like a Hickman type, or trying to be, or you know, or in that cut, cut, cut from that cloth. And Rom, just based off of what little I've read from his work at DC and stuff, and I haven't read his Carnage book yet, so I'll have to check that out. But 
I will say one thing about this book is that the dialogue is certainly better. Um, even when they're talking about really over the top stuff like the garden um, and they get into Meridius and all that, like there's definitely your cliche cheesy lines, but a lot of the, the other dialogue between characters and stuff and the reveals, I'm like, these are, these are actually paced well and planned out well. So I think I do wonder, I wonder what Rom's contribution is and what Al's is. I'm going to guess all the garden stuff is on some levels, probably Al has a little bit more a hand in it. But honestly, I don't know. But I got to give credit because I know in when we talked about Donny Cates, I, I kind of stuck it to the editors a lot on that book because I was like, hey, mm-hmm. bring in your talent, like figure him out and get him to turn his stuff in on time, you know, like do what you got to do. And uh, and this book, I feel like I feel like there's more of a synergy with the writers and the editors. Like it just seems like at least even when it's a little bonkers, it still seems cohesive. I don't know if you feel the same. Yeah, we'll see, though, because. Uh... I, I think, well, in, as when we're recording this, Dark Web's coming out soon. He'll start, because this has all been contained within Venom so right. far. So we'll see, because it's gonna. it seems like the story is going to, well, it's going to be touching with the X-Men and Spider-Man. And I know, I think Dylan and Eddie are going to be appearing in it at some some point. Um, so we'll, we'll see how, because the continuity was the biggest issue with the last Venom run, but... Uh, yeah sure. we'll, we'll see yeah well i know like for for example like i think nick Lowe and a lot of those guys are mainly taking the reins on the 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 group editing for for dark web um so maybe that's a good thing we'll, but like you said we'll <laughs> see hopefully they just take dylan mostly and they and while dark web's happening maybe eddie's just like a, an observer because we're going to get into eddie here in a second but he's in a place where he 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 can interact, but he's he's being goaded to interact at certain moments um, in time, and uh, and that's uh, so that Meridius's future can come to fruition. So it's 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 unique. Like it's uh it's it's one of those stories where it feels like, hey, I got this. Gr-, like I don't know, I can't remember the name. I think it's called t- uh, Time Killer or something like that. There's this like kind of cheesy horror movie where a guy is with his wife out in the countryside and they, they find out the building, uh, like they're, they're, there's nothing around them for a couple miles. The nearest building to them turns out it's a science lab that someone invented a time machine in <laughs> and the guy climbs into it because he thinks a killer is chasing him and his wife and he climbs into the time machine and then he ends up going back a day. And then it turns out he's the guy in the bandages that's chasing him in the present. And it kind of, you know, it kind of does that whole thing. This feels like that, where it's like this uh, college person's concept of, you know, okay, well, we mentioned time travel. Now we have to show each moment again, yeah. uh, you know? <laughs> and and so we talked about that earlier. What is your feeling on, uh, for those who ha- haven't read this yet, like I, we're getting into spoilers, obviously, but Eddie Brock starts off this story. He's the king in black and Dylan is on earth and, and there he's, you know, Eddie hasn't been on earth in a couple weeks. So Dylan is getting in fights in school and he's having problems and sleepers trying to help him, but he's bonding with the symbiote, which he was told not to do uh, by Eddie. And then Eddie is takes these four other, uh, which he names, he takes these four symbiotes, which he names after the Beatles, (laughs) which I didn't, I didn't take Eddie for a Beatles fan. Um, And he brings them on this mission and one of them gets corrupted and kills a bunch of surviving scroll people or something. And so Eddie uses that as a a means to go into his psyche, into the symbiote psyche. And he learns that he can, now that he's the king in black, he can not only communicate with other symbiotes in the present, but he can communicate with other symbiotes in different parts of time because that's how the symbiotes are actually more connected to the universe than even he thought. So he goes into his mind and he ends up in this place called the garden where he meets Meridius and other um, symbiotes that are also kings in black from throughout time. So, with that concept, you know, what is some of your pros and cons of that so far in the book? Well, I'm not a fan of time. I think the only time travel story I've ever liked is Back to the Future. Okay. <laughs> so, I it 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 gives the writer too many crutches, and I, I just I usually don't. They're not to me that they're not executed. Well, I don't know. I, I could end up liking this at the end. But as of now, I do not. I was just like, oh, here we go. It, it, it's time travel. And, and then 
I, I just worry that by the time we get back and like all said and done, it's like, oh, it's just reset or it doesn't matter. There's there's always that worry right in the back of my mind with stories with time travel. Yeah, I hear you. There's yeah, you're right. It's too easy to just go go back to issue one and have Eddie make the decision not to go into his mind and not go to the future. And then it's like, okay, so that's how you beat Meridius. You just go back to the moment you made that decision and choose the opposite, which then you would still create a, a what if universe or a multiverse, but uh, whatever. Um, so yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. It, it gets messy. And, uh, and I feel like that concept is them probably just going like, look, we don't even really know how to do what Donny Cates left us with. So we have, <laughs> that, we, that's, that was yeah. why I gave it a lot of a like, okay, this is what I, sure. I, I always thought going into this run by the end of, by the end of this, uh, that Eddie will be Venom again and Dylan will be whatever Dylan's going to be. I think originally I thought he'd end up being with sleeper or, right. but that's kind of where I figured they were going to end up going by the time, but Eddie would be traditional Venom un unruined of Donnie's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back, back to status quo. That's kind of where I figured what Al was tasked with doing in this run. I, I think so too. I think it's like, hey, you're going to go back to status quo, but before you go there, just take the epicness and space stuff up one notch and then bring it back down. Um, which I, I guess I understand that. Um, creatively, I understand that. Uh, it doesn't mean I love it, but um, I'm the same way. It's, it's one of those things where I feel like it's a, more of a burden and they have to figure mm -hmm. out how to de deal with it. And um, and they're introducing some new villains, but of course, most of them are symbiote villains on the Eddie story. On the Dylan side, though, the new characters are bringing in and recurring characters that they brought back are all human, um, some with abilities and some with suits that give them abilities. So I like that a lot, too. Um, mm -hmm. And I know in the next arc we'll talk about here in, in a few minutes, we'll, we'll wrap this up. But the next arc we're going to talk about, they really go sci-fi with it with Kang the Conqueror and, and uh, the other versions of... Uh, bedlam and stuff and, and we'll get into the next one but final thoughts on this first five issues because this book ends where you find out like D eddie gets killed essentially in the first or second issue when he's trying to warn dylan about uh, about you know something going on and so he comes back to earth and he says dylan come meet me at this hotel um the the person in your house that's pretending to be me is not me um it's a it's not eddie it's not the real eddie it's not your dad so please come meet me so dylan and sleeper slip out the window Someone with a ball cap is watching him. Turns out that's the actual Venom symbiote. Um, and he ends up saving Dylan as the hotel gets, you know, nuked, essentially. And Eddie is killed. His bones are found. But before he died, he slipped into the time stream again and ended up in the garden. And so, I don't know. I just, like, it's it's it's, it's a lot. It's uh, But I do appreciate that as much as they can, they at least try to bring it back down to the street level, even when they're doing the big cosmic time travel stuff. Um, and they are making the stakes still feel personal. It still does feel like a father-son story, which if you're going to take anything from Donnie's run and run with it, I'm glad they are, are doing that at least. Yeah, yeah. One of my pet peeves of reading comics is like when I have to wait, when I'm reading something, I'm like, wait. And I got to flip back a page to make sure I didn't miss a page. I mean, and I and I think with a few of these issues, I started doing that. And I, especially when there was like the multiple eddies and, I, I think they were trying to kind of confuse you, which I get, but I'm just, it, it, yeah, and that's it. I guess it's just, it's a pet peeve of mine. And didn't they like, they de remember Donnie left Eddie like aged like an old man at the end. And I think he's just restored back to younger Eddie in the beginning <laughs> of this with like no mention of it all, at all. Not even like, oh, hey, I learned how to make myself not look old anymore. Yeah, like, yeah, Eddie Brock definitely <laughs> aged like 20 years. And I don't know if that was just the artist doing that, but they gave Eddie a cane, too, to kind of illustrate yeah. more right. than he had. Yeah, and that being the king took it out of him. So it's a little frustrating that this arc didn't give us more of, I guess, Eddie as a king in black and showing him do all these fantastical things. And we only get one instance at the opening of the story where he helps save or tries to save some scrolls um, in space by, you know, piloting different symbiotes. And I'm like, well... Maybe that we should have got a mini series maybe in between the two runs to kind of just show us a little bit more of that. So that way when a threat like Meridius and stuff does show up, it it you know, it's like, oh crap, this because as far as I know, Eddie 
he screws up that mission with the scrolls. <laughs> so, yeah. so, I'm like, so I'm like, is he, was he even good at being King in black? <laughs> like, no, well, yeah, he, yeah, he did that. And then he couldn't sense carnage back on earth immediately after. Right. <laughs> right. Like he's the, I mean, but I guess it is Eddie to be flawed. So I guess there, there's that, I guess, loophole in for the, <laughs> for the writers. Yeah, I guess so. Um, so f- final thoughts, anything you want to say before we give our, our score reviews? I mean, no, it, it, it was fine at this point. I, I hadn't, yeah. <laughs> I hadn't like lost hope or anything. So I was still <laughs> like, Hey, let's give it time. Give it time. You know, it's slow burn. Right. So awesome. I was the same way. Actually, I turned out to like it a little bit more and I was like, well, this is, it is a slow burn, but I'm interested. I'm interested in all these human characters. It was great seeing Liz yeah, and Carl yeah. and Drake and Life Foundation again. So yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see where they go. So I would say out of five, I probably give this like a three and a three to three and a half. I actually, I I found myself like, all right, I'm on I'm on board for this at this moment. What about you? I, I yeah, and I'd I'd say probably like a three two. I mean, it, the the thing that marked me down is Hitch's art was not. Yeah. I I we and to be fair on him, we were spoiled with the last run. You know, for as bad as the writing was, the art the, through the last was. Cage's amazing. run was amazing. Yeah. So that's why I don't want to kill him too much over it. And po- not that I can draw, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it, I was still optimistic by the end of this, this fifth issue. And there's that cool splash page that I, thankfully they made into a second print cover with, uh, oh, that yeah. ended the, the first trade, that big splash of Meridius. So with his face and the jaws mm-hmm. coming and stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. There's um, some pages that are just meant to be second prints, and they they nailed it <laughs> with that yeah. one. Nice, I agree. Um, awesome. Well, Eddie, thank you so much again for for taking the time out and doing this. And we do have uh, for those listening, Eddie will come back in a couple episodes from now, and we will be talking about Venom Volume Two from uh, Al Ewing, Rom V, and Brian Hitch. So uh, definitely stay subscribed so you don't miss out on that. Eddie, is there any place anything you want to plug or anything any, that let people know where they can find you? No, you don't need to find me. <laughs> awesome. Leave that <Eddie laughs> alone. Comment yeah. on the video. Yeah, comment on the video, and he'll be back uh, in a couple episodes from now, and we'll talk more. And then I'll bring him back. If he's av- available, we'll do the Rom V Carnage series and maybe Savage Avengers at some point down the road. So awesome. Thank you so much, man. And thanks to all of you for listening. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. We'll see you in the future. Peace. <laughs>